Okay, finally, this is live. Uh, I even got annoyed of like watching the uh, the countdown. Hi, Danko. Thanks for connecting and thanks for coming. Hello, hello. Hi, Maria. Hi, Maria. And, and thanks for having me here. Yeah. Come on, always happy. Hi, guys. Um, we start feeding up the virtual classroom or virtual studio, whatever you guys prefer calling it. Uh, thanks everyone for coming back. This is, uh, you know, taking uh, different turns every day. Yes. Hi guys. Uh, um, can you please, everybody who is out there, uh, as always, drop us an emoji, drop us a comment or something so that we know that uh, everything is... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Danko. Now I know that you can hear me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, we started getting some comments. Uh, uh, hi, guys. Yes. Keep these comments coming so that we know that you're there alive, not just like put your phone next to yourself. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that me and Danko don't feel sad. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, by the way, Danko, do you see a comment yeah. in the chat? Yes, yep. I can see them. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, okay, sure. okay, cool. Can you see so, them? So, guys, yes, say hi to Danko. Well, okay, perfect. Um, as you're saying hi, and uh, um, yes, good to see everybody back. Uh, um, we're just going to, you know, like uh, start from the very beginning. Um, actually, also, let us know if somebody knows Danko in person or from any other workshop. Let's see. Let's see if... Uh, <laughs> If you've got friends uh, there, and uh, oh yeah, uh, there, there is someone. Yeah. Oh, of course, <laughs> somebody who says yeah. "Ciao, Daniele." Yeah. 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 Cool. <laughs> cool. Yes. Uh, secret friends. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, Facebook user, unknown one. Yeah. Yeah. No. Doesn't want to identify themselves. No. Okay. Yeah. That, that that's be? perfect. Who would that be? Yeah. Anyway, okay, uh, Daniele. Uh, so the, we, yeah. we really have not too much time, and I know that you have yeah. tons of things that you wanted to share. Uh, but I okay. still wanted to start a little bit with your introduction, just in case somebody has not mm, like met you. Um, I just want to make sure okay. that everybody knows who is uh, who's in the classroom okay. today. And uh, yeah, so um, I'm gonna just pull up your art station. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. okay. So. Yeah, so just, you know, if you want to go ahead and kind of introduce yourself, what you normally say in situations okay, like perfect. this. <laughs> okay, that I am very nervous. So this is very... Yeah, in very no awkward oh. situations, how do you break yeah, the yeah. ice? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, okay. I I will say that, uh, first of all, uh, hi, everyone, and thanks for uh, having me here. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, I am Daniele. Uh, everybody called me Danko uh, in the field, and I work as a character artist, uh, especially for the collectibles industry. I also make some, some other small stuff, but uh, the main focus of my job is, uh, is about making statues and miniatures and stuff that is meant to be 3D printed. I am quite uh, specialized in making uh, real humans. Uh, and in fact, I have a lot of uh, uh, professional works uh, about uh, actors and people from the past. Uh, usually they are all dead people. Uh, there are also some of them that are still alive. Um, that's it, basically. Um, for my personal works, usually as I work a lot on uh, making uh, uh, realistic stuff, uh, I really like to explore uh, other type of uh, styles uh, like a cartoon or uh, trying to tell funny stories uh, with, with uh, this oak or the works. Uh, and this is the last one that I did for the beta. I loved it. Uh, I loved <laughs> it. It's a ZBrush beta, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Oh uh, this was also a rush because uh, we had kind of like five days to complete it. And uh, when they told us the deadline, uh, I was like, oh, my God, uh, I still have to, to start uh, my job. So it was really rushed. And, and there okay, are guys, some stuff here and there. Everybody, okay. I will just remind everybody that we're in the challenge. Monster challenge is seven days. Yeah. Daniele yeah. had ZBrush beat the challenge 2020, <laughs> which was five days. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that was that thing for five days okay yeah i'm glad you're yeah, not but, competing but, in the challenge then 
<laughs> oh no, <laughs> no, I really don't want to compete because I'm not good at making monsters, so uh, and also inventing monsters. So, so that's Thanks okay. for encouragement. I prefer, I prefer to judge. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So today I would like to talk. Uh, that Maria asked me to to select the topic, and so as Marlon already told about the blockout, uh, there was Martin that that made uh, a demo showing the how to tell the stories about talking about storytelling. Uh, I really wanted to to pick another subject also because <laughs> there are some cool techniques that I can show and it's about creating details and uh, particular type of details uh, because uh, and this is uh, this can be kind of like uh, good proof of this because I would like to talk oh about some nice techniques uh, to create uh, quite easily uh, I mean nothing is so easy but quite easily stuff like that so details about creating like scales uh, stuff that um, really really can create nice patterns because uh, during the years I developed uh, and I, I'm not saying that I've invented because uh, I, I can really imagine that other people uh, uh, came out to the same conclusion but I found out some nice techniques that uh, will ease my work in making uh, stuff like that so amazing uh, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So I'm actually going to ask everybody, guys, uh, like uh, the first question for today. Oh, and as a by the way, I totally forgot to remind everybody that we also have a giveaway uh, today and we've got yeah. a giveaway uh, for mentorship program that we've just opened. Um, like uh, Daniele is uh, one of the mentors in the program. So I'm like triple excited that he actually came to uh, do this workshop. And uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So Daniele has been mentoring our students. Well, we can talk about this later, or kind of a meanwhile, yeah, you know. Sure. Um, like, um, yeah. So uh, uh, he definitely gets like the 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 best uh, comments from all the students. Uh, everybody say, says that he's got uh, uh, Italian humor. I don't know what the hell that means, but anyway. <laughs> I don't know it either. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway. So uh, so yeah. So we've got a, a scholarship giveaway in the end. But um, yeah. So uh, uh, let's uh, um, do this uh, right after you know we're we're done with the workshop. But before we start it, actually, I wanted to ask you guys um, if um, uh, the, the the first question: Can you actually write us in the chat? What's your uh, struggle with detailing? Like. Or what is your biggest problem with adding details? And just in general, um, how you do, like, do you think it's difficult just so that we have a little bit more guidance towards, you know, uh, like, what's your relationship with detailing in general? Is that all right, Daniela, right? We'll yeah, sure, up. sure. Yes, okay. I can start saying that uh, my relationship. Um, uh, so I will proceed. The, uh, <laughs> no, no, the don't guides. talk about your relationships. We're only talking no, no, about no. detailing. <laughs> no, no, no. My relationship with detailing, of course. Okay, thank no, you. because for me, for me, um, uh, for example, making details uh, is sometimes uh, a big struggle um, because it's time-consuming, and uh, I always feel shy at the beginning in creating details uh, because uh, you know you always have this feeling that you're not doing it right. So uh, I guess that most of the people uh, feel the same, and of yeah, course, Sarah yeah, saying she needs to get faster, and you're yeah. it's like so time-consuming. Yeah, yes. yeah, exactly. Yeah, but uh, basically, yeah, uh, you you need to get faster. But the, the secret is really that, uh, uh, as usually, it happens with the uh, art-related stuff. Uh, um, there is some sort of time limit that you cannot really, really uh, lower down because uh, in order to make uh, cool stuff, uh, you always have to spend a lot of time. And the more time you spend, usually, uh, the the best uh, is the result. Of course. For me, it's important to know the logic uh, that is behind uh, some, some, I mean, uh, some pipelines and workflows uh, because uh, uh, this is the key point and, and the, the, the part in which you can really lower down the time that is required for you to make the details. Uh, because if you know how to make particular stuff, uh, of course, uh, you, you are not going and facing uh, this sort of technical problems that uh, that uh, somewhat somewhat is blocking you and, and is making you go slower. So you can really spend the right amount of time. That is, of course, a lot because uh, if we uh, think about uh, people like Chris Costa that make all the details uh, end by end, he spend a lot of time, but the result, uh, of course, pays off. So um, that's it. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, so I keep dropping uh, like the comments on uh, you know yeah. on the yeah, yeah, fact- news and things, but uh, as a uh, I know it's hard to read and talk and think at the same time and probably yeah. sculpt. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just yeah. gonna sum it up for you that uh, there are I think yeah. two three major things like uh, uh, yeah. first to stop when to stop adding details. Second is yeah. like it's really time consuming, and of the course. third one. Uh, is uh, getting realistic effect, realistic result, all of this. Yes, exactly. But, but well, of course, uh, um, there is no real secret, really, because uh, you you really have to to try and try and try also different techniques. And also the techniques uh, that you use are always related to the type of production that you're making, because you always have to take into account uh, uh, eventually that, the, that there are some limitations. For, for example, I work a lot on print stuff and uh, a key factor is the scale. So if I have to make something that is uh, somewhat a one six scale, uh, so it's quite small, I know that I have to push the details and stylize the details in a certain way and for example i will not i, I will never make real uh, realistic ports uh, on a statue that if i know that it is of a smaller scale because in that case uh, you also have to take into account the material in which it will be pro- produced but uh, overall uh, you have to to somewhat stylize and find the compromise to make it look uh, uh, good at that particular scale. Uh, if you are making video games, you are of course limited uh, uh, by the texture resolution because uh, you will uh, extract some sort of normal map uh, in order to to create the the final look and the, the impression that the details are in the low poly model. When you are on uh, cinematic characters, uh, that is the 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 particular workflow in which you really want to to try to go and achieve uh, the more realistic results. And in that case, uh, you can really use scan data. Data, for example, texturing XYZ textures and stuff like that. Uh, when you're also rendering stuff, and probably uh, I'm not the most suitable person to say this because I, I work mainly on stuff that are related to collectibles, but I know for sure that uh, a, a key point is uh, to make something look realistic is also the shading. So uh, um, the making a good detail in terms of sculpting uh, is uh, never enough because if you don't make a good texturing and the good shading network, uh, it will always look like plastic, uh, like somebody mentioned. And in that part, uh, probably the, the shading, uh, how you set up the shading and also the other textures, like the, the roughness and the specular levels will, uh, will play a major role. So it's just, um, you really need to, to, to put together more stuff uh, in order to render something and then make it look uh, really realistic. So, uh, but when it comes to sculpting, for me, the, the most important thing is just to try to observe and and try to, to recreate uh, what you see. So, uh, there is no real secret, yeah, actually. Okay, so can we jump uh, on ZBrush? Yeah, 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 of course, for sure. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, think okay. I, I was just uh, pulling also a few comments. Yes, I yeah, was hoping sure. you were going to show this guy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've no, been watching your have... uh, updates on social for the week. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, because uh, uh, probably the people don't know that now from, right now I'm not broadcasting from my house because uh, I was caught in the mid of a, of a class, so I am off site and I'm in the north of Italy, in the mid of the mountains. So I'm broca- broadcasting also from the school room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very and so this is probably life, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's funny. It's funny. But uh, I don't have with me all the files. So this is the only thing that I can show. And probably I also prepared this in order to show something during the live because I don't have my files with me. So this is an example of uh, something that you can create uh, with, with detailing. And uh, this is not perfect because uh, uh, in order to create details, of course, uh, 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 while you keep working uh, during the years and you gain experience and you purchase stuff, uh, uh, you will find yourself to create your own asset that you 
somewhat always reuse. So I have, of, of course, my set of uh, alphas. Some of them have been downloaded, some of them have been purchased, and I also have created some of them by hand. Uh, and I use them uh, on particular projects uh, in, based on what I have to create. So as I already mentioned, if I have to create something that uh, has to be shaded in a more realistic way, of course, I will rely more on uh, 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 textures that, can, that come from scan data. So uh, I have mm -hmm. a lot of yeah. texturing XYZ stuff. Uh, when it comes uh, to something that uh, has to be, for example, printed and produced, uh, let's say, and I made this with the same approach, uh, I try to create uh, uh, this sort of details uh, using different type of alphas uh, that probably in the close-up will look less realistic, but uh, when printed, will give more the look of, of, of the model that has porosity right. and uh, has uh, nice stuff. So, we have a question um, here uh, yeah. about bitmaps. Uh, can you explain proper workflow for expert low mesh to substance painter to bring all details without losing them? Normal maps to displacement. Oh, well. Wow, so I have to to be honest because I'm not so so expert uh, about this. Uh, usually, when I use a uh, Substance Painter, I I just bake stuff. Uh, so I export my uh, poly mesh uh, and I use my low poly and create bakes uh, and try to make bakes. Uh, uh, checking with the uh, with the cage. Uh, if I need a cage, I can make in substance or marmoset. It depends on the complexity of the of the character. But I'm, I really don't have any any real uh, real secret about that. I, I will just try to to uh, bake the maps and check if they are good. So usually I make the bakes for for stuff like for substance and, and stuff like that inside of substance. So I'm not extracting the displacement map from ZBrush and. Uh, I usually extract displacement from ZBrush if I had to render something in an external render like uh, right. Ray or Arnold. But to, to be honest, I want to be honest because I really don't want to to, to talk about uh, stuff that I don't know. Uh, it's a lot of time that I really don't make uh, any more pre-rendered stuff, uh, really because uh, in the last three or four years, I really focused on creating collectibles. And this uh, somewhat freed me from, uh, from that part of the work in which I have to go here and under the tab displacement map and extract <laughs> the displacement and check that it works. But um, I followed the Chris Costa class last year uh, because I wanted to, to get again inside of this topic. And um, basically the workflow is uh, quite straightforward. All you need is just to have a model that is uh, quite clean in terms <laughs> of the Check saying hi, Daniele. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, Daniel. <laughs> Daniel Bell. <laughs> Hi, Daniel. Wow. Yeah, Ooh. Daniel Bell is one of my heroes. Uh, so, uh, my I love how artists. in this industry yeah. everybody is following each other and learning from each other. Yeah. And now you're just saying that you took Chris Costa's class and, yeah. you know, we've got a bunch of your students in this class. Like, yeah. And then Daniel Bell is watching us and Daniel, oh I was watching you <laughs> a couple of hours. I, I, I'm about to have a panic attack right now because uh, I'm really <laughs> like a fanboy. Uh, yeah, that's it. Because uh, I'm not really a fan of actors or or uh, famous people. Uh, I'm really a fan of uh, people that I, that I feel that are uh, somewhat very good in their job. Uh, so uh, Daniel is an amazing artist. And uh, uh, when I see his stuff and have the chance to talk with him, I always feel like nervous, like uh, you see, you know, a child that, oh that my looks God. a fan of, of, of his heroes. But also with Marlon, it uh, happens the same. When I first met him in the summit, I was so nervous and like, oh my gosh. I felt so, so, so small. Okay, so uh, being said this, uh, yeah. So today I would like to talk <laughs> about- he was reminding, <laughs> no pressure, Daniele. <laughs> oh, no, I, absolutely not. Yeah, I, I'm I'm always thrown inside of this stuff and I'm in the middle of a very amazing people and I really feel uh, super shy and nervous, but that's okay. I, I can handle the pressure. Also, if I have a panic attack, I have a friend with me, so I can always- uh, <laughs> Use this uh, <laughs> some sort of pressure oh reliever. Yeah, no, it's very cool. A friend of mine. Like about uh, 100 people live cross platform yeah, right yeah, now. I yeah. wish you having a panic attack. Yeah, yeah but, but but you you can purchase this on Amazon and it's very cool. You can make play amazing music with this. So okay, so <laughs> with this being said, let's talk about detailing. So uh, detailing is. Um, I repeat, is all about observation. Today, I would like to talk you um, about a particular type of detail uh, because uh, 
I would like to focus more on the technical side because uh, I'm quite good <laughs> in explaining technical stuff. Uh, and I would like to talk about uh, a detail that I, a technique that I developed when I had to make uh, this particular girl. So this is a uh, Gorgon, a Medusa, and I had to make all these scales uh, on the snakes uh, and on her body. And uh, I always had some sort of problems in creating scaly stuff uh, because, uh, you know, when you use a, an alpha, so let me show, uh, let me open ZBrush. Uh, there is a thing that I really hate. Um, let's try to create some sort of scales on this Frankenstein. I repeat, I don't have enough, a lot of offsets here, so I will, uh, for a second, uh, turn off uh, all those layers, and I will create a new one. I will explain this later. But And I want to load some alphas. I have, a lot of alphas, I have to chase them during the years. Uh, and there is a set of alphas that are, I really love in order to create uh, scaly patterns and are from uh, a guy that is called uh, Demir G. Martin. And he created this sort of 10 tileable alphas. There's and a question that, actually, yeah, yeah uh, just true. about that. Do you make your own skin alpha maps most of the time yes. and what's the yeah. role? Not most of the times. Uh, I make them uh, when I am out of home. So in order to make the Frankenstein, I had to make them. Uh, but I make them when I have a particular type of detail and uh, I really cannot come out with uh, with the pre-made alphas that I can find around. Um, I really love, if I can mention, there are uh, some cool resources. Of course, there are the texturing XYZ stuff. Uh, even yeah, though sometimes, uh, yeah, they... they to me, uh, sometimes they are they are um, they are so perfect uh, that can can't really help me in uh, doing something related to collectibles because, as already mentioned, when I create in collectibles, I really want to create some sort of more stylized look. I, I mean, something that looks, for example, like skin, like porosity, but uh, that is more stylized and is uh, more more uh, exaggerated because when when you later print stuff and you have to make a production, uh, you always tend to lose a bit the details. There is the uh, um, skin pack by Flip Normals. Uh, there are kind of like 100 alphas or stuff like that. Uh, and some of them are really cool. Uh, also, I have, uh, during the years, I have found here and there some, some images uh, uh, or, or uh, pictures and I prepare them. So let's say that I have a collection of uh, maybe uh, some 10 or 20 alphas that I use uh, uh, on a regular basis. Uh, and then on top of them, I always try to, to search and create uh, some end detail to, to give some sort of personality. There is also the Pablo Munoz uh, skin pack uh, alphas, uh, that is very cool. Also there you can find a lot of cool alphas, but my suggestion you always try to, to test and experiment with the specs. They, they're not really so expensive. They are quite cheap because uh, for, I, I think, like 10 bucks to uh, some tens of bucks, uh, you can really purchase uh, them. Uh, so I always uh, suggest to experiment with them because maybe in, in, in a particular pack, you can find one or two alphas that you like because also it depends on, on your particular style, how you feel comfortable with the particular alpha. So uh, you, save, you save it and you create your library of uh, pre-made alphas and uh, alphas made by yourself in case you cannot find the one that is more suitable for, for your needs. So um, like this, it's just testing. There is not the perfect alpha. Uh, I, you can see that there are people oh, that create- There's a huge question, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, shall I read that? There's another one. Yeah. Uh, I have a oh, for uh, from Artyom. I have a question about how to sculpt sharp shape changing. Uh, what I mean oh. specifically when sculpting anatomy or cloth for a more realistic result, you need clean overlapping shapes. How would you advise to approach such details? For me specifically, I use oh. masking and move brush. Yeah, exactly. But uh, this is the same approach that I use, especially if I have to make cloth. Uh, a thing that you really uh, is very difficult uh, to make inside of zebras, but usually in digital is uh, to make some sort of overlapping effect. So let me let me take. Uh, um, okay, le let's let's make something here on this. Uh, okay, so let's say that we have here uh, we are creating some sort of. Uh, 
uh, cloth on top of <laughs> Frankenstein face. And there is a, um, usually when you have a fold and you have a, a huge effect of gravity, probably this, uh, this belly of the fold will somewhat uh, overlap and make something like that. So uh, even in this case, there is, there is, there is no uh, secret magic. You just mask the part that you really don't want to move and then push. You can, of course, take advantage of some tricks with your brushes because uh, not all the people know that uh, every brush, uh, you can somewhat tell how the orientation uh, uh, you can dictate the orientation uh, in which they deform the mesh. So basically, the standard brush by default uh, will uh, will uh, pull out uh, the shape, uh, I mean uh, the the surface based on the sample normals. They sometimes use this technique uh, in order to create overlapping cloth, and I can take the orientation and say I want to pull the shape. Uh, kind of like up, and I have this here in my custom user interface because I use this on a regular on a regular basis. So basically now the, the, the shape will not be pulled anymore uh, uh, based on the normal of the surface, but on this particular direction. So when I Z-add, you can see that it's sometimes pushing the shape uh, up, but if I go with alt pressed, it will go down and inside of the screen because you can see that here the, the, the arrow points uh, a bit towards me on the upper direction. So with this, I cannot invert this uh, and I can create uh, this sort of sense of overlap uh, and then I can clean up the shape uh, and fix this and maybe use some inflate. And I can use this in conjunction with a mask uh, in order to allow me to only work on this part. Uh, I also have created now in the 2021, there is, uh, there is the cloth simulation. Unfortunately, I don't have here with me, but I have uh, some sort of uh, brushes that uh, take advantage of this uh, new um, elastic, okay, elasticity simulation iteration. So basically you can tell your brush uh, to use the cloth simulation. And I've created a particular one in which I have this orientation set in this way. Now uh, I should, I should make some, some sort of changes here, give some trails uh, in order to make it work. I really hope that ZBrush will not crash because this is, uh, and uh, in this way I can really use also the simulation to allow me to make this effect more stronger. And you can see that really in this way I can pull the shape and make this sort of overlapping effect. So uh, sometimes I use this orientation. This is similar to using the uh, uh, curve, the, there is a parameter. I cannot, re okay, uh, uh, there is this gravity strength that makes something similar, but I really sometimes want to drive my brush and say that I want to pull a particular shape in a, in a particular direction. Because it's like when you, when you are uh, uh, sculpting in traditional, uh, based on the direction in which you put your tool, you can really carve a shape in a particular way. So uh, with this technique, sometimes I can create these sort of pockets. So like this, I'm pressing Alt, so it's pulling uh, inside and below. And then again, of course, I always have to smooth this a bit. I can pull this up and you can see that on the fly, I can create this sort of overlapping effect. Now it's also taking uh, um, advantage of the simulation, of the cloth simulation. So I can some, somewhat mix my sculpt with uh, some sort of small simulation. I will not pull this to 100 because uh, um, uh, with this value up to 100, the, the simulation will take more, uh, more, uh, um, will be stronger, but I really want to to drive the majority of the detail with my sculpt. So I, let's say that 15% of simulation and have the simulation just uh, fill the gaps and in case help me uh, fix the shapes uh, because it will try to simulate and take into account if there are some sort of gravity effect, uh, pinching effect and stuff like that. And it's very cool because uh, uh, you can see that you can create this sort of, of effect in which there is something that is overlapping. Uh, the, the last part, of course, if you feel that the effect is not working good, you can always create a mask and just work your way with the move because this is the final way to create nice stuff. And you can see that I have created really an overlap with, with kind of some uh, quite easily. Okay. 
oh, it's looking good. I, I will save a version of this because I, I love uh, this, this sort of... <laughs> <laughs> of <laughs> actually yeah, good. yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, so let, let um, me save. I'm just, you know, uh, dropping you another question or, yeah. Daniel, or do yeah, you prefer sure. doing a Q&A after? Like, what's no, your... No, if, if no, you, if you have any questions, I, I can really spend yeah. all the well, time. Like another related kind of, a, you know, like next thing is uh, uh, about uh, tips on how to do stylized fur. Oh. Okay, yeah. Oh my Perfect. God, I'm I'm is afraid it, this question is right to the point because no. I think every art hero student asks about stylized fur. Okay, I'm super prepared because uh, uh, during yes. the years uh, I have uh, I have made a lot of research. You know, in, not really, but I, <laughs> I really I really know uh, quite well the brushing system inside of ZBrush because uh, I, I'm I'm a very technical guy. I have uh, some sort of scientific background, so probably my brain uh, is uh, used to think in terms of uh, technical stuff. And uh, how I create stylized fur, I have uh, created my own brush, and I know that this own brush works very well with the Sculptris Pro, and usually I create stylized fur in this way. Okay. Okay, the logic, uh, I can explain the logic. Usually when I, when you create stylized food, the secret is try, uh, because, okay, let me start from the beginning. I developed this technique when I started to uh, being interested in uh, um, traditional sculpting, and I started to follow nice guys that can create uh, realistic stuff uh, and uh, traditional stuff uh, that is looking amazing. And the secret to create nice looking fur, of course, uh, I have to, um, kind of work uh, in, in a more controlled way, but it's to try to give the sense of, uh, of the shapes of these strands overlapping one on top of the other. So uh, the key factor, at least for me, I work uh, a lot on the collectibles. And usually when you work on the collectibles, you want to avoid those shapes that really overlap. But I really want to create this sort of uh, uh, top part that looks like it's, uh, it's going a bit forward. So I've created this brush that basically takes advantage of the fact that here I can tell here in the brush modifier, I have a very small interface because uh, uh, I work on a 4K monitor. So uh, sorry if it's not so visible, I will use the magnifier. Here under the brush modifier, I have the possibility to set this tilt brush that basically says, uh, instead of putting your alphas uh, facing the normal, let's try to orient these uh, somewhat facing forward. So this is the result. I also have this trails option that uh, kind of works like uh, a multiplier for the effect of my brush. So, uh, and I also have this once orientation that says, uh, okay, I start pulling like in this way. So basically I'm saying that uh, no matter where I move, uh, it will always try to pull the shape in this direction. But uh, of course I can change this and put this in the continuous orientation based on the thing that they have to do. And so with this particular setup, uh, I can really create, uh, and I'm not creating a continuous stroke, otherwise it will look really bad. But uh, I will start uh, to mimic uh, what a traditional good sculptor will do is uh, to, uh, with, with this tool, uh, start to pull the shape slowly and gently to create this sort of sense of overlap uh, that in the end, uh, if you mix, and you keep working on this, uh, uh, will create this sort of uh, stylized fur. Another way could be to uh, create your VDM. There are particular brushes in ZBrush that can be created that are called VDM, vector displacement brush. And uh, you can create them starting from a plane. I will change the, the material just because uh, I have a, a somewhat gray tool on a gray background. Uh, I was once a fan of uh, the dark background, but in the latest times uh, for my eyes, it, it, uh, I find more relaxing uh, the, the uh, light one. So, okay, let's, uh, no, let's change the material. Let, okay, something that will pop more. So basically I can start from uh, a, um, a plane and I can, uh, remorph this to grid because uh, in order for this technique to work you want to create something on a perfectly square plane and i will get rid here of the uh, sculptris pro and i can kind of 
create the shape that mimics uh, some sort of fur. It will not look good because uh, usually you really want to spend a lot of time in creating your VDM. So uh, now I'm just going real quick to show the logic. So I can, and here I can create uh, something that is really going and created this sort of uh, undercut. So this overlap. So I will create this overlapping shape. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. But you can see that in the end it will also look super cool. Maybe I want this to be higher. And I can, I will for a second activate my smooth stronger brush because I really love when I'm creating block outs to have the capability to really smooth a lot my shapes. Then I will uh, just real quick uh, create some sort of strands. Usually work on a Cintiq, now I am on an Intuos and uh, uh, I have somewhat uh, lost the capability to 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 create nice lines <laughs> on an Intuos. Yeah, yeah. I, no, uh, because uh, it is just a matter of uh, getting again used to it, uh, but uh, probably my, my brain now is set to, to work on a Cintiq, so uh, for me it's very difficult to get uh, straight lines, uh, usually, so <laughs> in this case also, also more difficult. So uh, let's say it's not looking really like uh, like uh, some fool, but, but let's pretend that it is. So with this, uh, I can really create, taking a brush that has, uh, has base type, uh, the single layer brush. So uh, this one will make the job, uh, this Kisser creature. And oh, just remember, don't take this one. This is a single layer brush, but for some reason, when you create uh, a brush starting with this, uh, it will have some issues uh, the most of the times. And I will also <laughs> talk about the issues that it will have. And so with this, I can go here under the brush menu and create a multi alpha brush here okay and it will replace uh, all these uh, uh, vdms uh, with this one and it will create a multi alpha means that if i have different sub tools uh, every sub tool will create uh, another instance of this or i can also press this from mesh and it will add this particular mesh at the end of the collection so i always have the chance to uh, uh, create a collection and keep adding stuff. And now I have uh, this brush that basically will create uh, four. Of course, it will work based on the resolution because it, it's really pulling the shapes. So uh, if I sculpt in something that on, on a dense plane in order to create the same details, I have to, I need to have these uh, quite dense. And I can really create this four with this uh, sense of overlap. Uh, of course, if I would create something that is more cool looking, like uh, with, with nice shapes and nice flows, it will, of course, look more like four. Um, so uh, it's up of uh, um, it's about uh, what you want to create and also the type of style that you want to mimic. Uh, because this is an advice uh, whenever you are creating, uh, especially for this ty those type of surfaces that in the real world uh, are uh, created by, but by stuff that you really cannot recreate uh, uh, sculpturally. So I mean, feathers, uh, fur, uh, I mean, they are created by messes of air. Uh, so you really want, first of all, uh, to uh, go and understand the type of style that you want to achieve because you can really sculpt air in uh, very different styles, feathers in very different styles, and fur in very different styles. So also when it comes to stylized fur, uh, you could um, want uh, this sort of overlaps or have something that is more solid shape. So uh, for me, based on the type of fur that I have to create, uh, I use my particular brush or sometimes I, I really go like freestyle and uh, creating cuts and, and using the clay build up, uh, or I can create my own VDM. At home, I have my own set of VDM. Some of them, uh, I have created some of them. I have purchased some other. Uh, you can find on our station, there are a lot of uh, sets and cool sets because uh, uh, if I find something that is suitable for my work, uh, I, I'm, I really use it <laughs> and, uh, because uh, it's faster and uh, if it works, why not? So um, that's it. Uh, for, for Vina says that this technique is great. Yeah, yeah, no, it's cool. And 
And I also use VDM, VDM to create scales because uh, when it comes to create scaling monsters, uh, and this is this was somewhat the topic uh, uh, I wanted to focus yeah. on. But if you have a, a other question, just throw them. Uh, yeah, because... yeah, we have actually a bunch of questions here, and I think okay. uh, scale is one of the. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let me just, uh, uh, for example. Um, uh, Jane was asking, is there any tip on how to make really clean edges? Oh, yeah, it depends on, on uh, uh, which type of clean edges. I mean, uh, uh, clean edge can refer to art surface stuff or uh, organic stuff. If it's something that is organic, yeah, Jane, you really clarify. Want to... Yeah, clarify. Give us an example yeah. of what you're talking yeah. about. Maybe we can, uh, you know, tackle that as a case. And then, meanwhile, we're on it. Um, yeah. Okay, then there was a question about fur, fine. And uh, there was another one. Oh, somebody is saying that he really struggles. Yeah, Lovelu uh, struggles when he wants to subdivide. Okay, yeah. So, very good question. And there is no answer. No, the, the right answer <laughs> Congratulations. is Congratulations. No, Just got a question more, with no answer. Yeah, no, no. Uh, this is the thing that I feel also uh, my students always struggle with this uh, because uh, they, they, they think that there is a moment, uh, the perfect moment uh, in order to subdivide or uh, zero mesh your stuff uh, or add the resolution. The logic is that uh, when you feel that uh, uh, the mesh you're working on uh, has no more uh, uh, capability, you have no more capability to add the detail that you want. So it's based on what you want to achieve. For example, if uh, let's go back on the uh, on this Frankenstein. If I really want to focus on working on the main shapes, uh, uh, this is a. Uh, more um, uh, more than enough for me. So uh, for the primary volumes, uh, I really want to focus on uh, working on uh, very, very low polygon meshes. Uh, so I usually subdivide. So let's say that I want to create a very small scale. So I will uh, use for a second this uh, standard brush. And if this has to be really small, uh, if I really can see that uh, it's not, no, let me, let me reset for a second this, uh, brush and also get rid of the simulation properties. The logic is that if I see that uh, it, it's really not creating the detail uh, with the resolution I want, uh, probably I need to subdivide it. So uh, it's, so, it's always something that is uh, related to um, your perception and how you feel that, that the detail is, is uh, looking. So if it's not looking good, probably you, you don't have enough resolution. So uh, there is, again, no real secret. Just observe and try to understand if the detail that you're doing is, uh, if the resolution of your model is uh, uh, on point with the kind of detail that you're trying to create. So, um, of course, uh, I know that uh, I can subdivide my model up to a particular limit. If I really want to create super crisp details uh, that have to be extracted with displacement, etc., I can also activate the, the HD geometry mode. Uh, for the type of work of my works uh, for the collectible industry, I really never need the HD geometry. Usually, when I reach a poly count of uh, maybe the maximum is uh, for a sub tool in order to be detailed, uh, maybe 20 or 30 million polygons. Uh, but usually, those are a type of uh, sub tools, uh, for example, clothes, uh, if I want to have uh, very, very nice uh, uh, textile patterns, so fabric patterns. Uh, otherwise, uh, I feel that, for example, yeah, we have 3 million polygons, probably to have a decent, really decent, uh, decent, uh, um, or not decent, but nice detailing, uh, I could reach up to 12 million polygons, but that 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 is usually an amount that that is enough. Okay. Uh, and meanwhile, um, okay. Hope that answers. By the way, uh, okay. guys. Um, yeah. Uh, actually, okay. before we move on, I just wanted to, you know, ask the crowd if everybody is uh, uh, is clear. You know, if uh, like oh, okay. uh, you guys still hear us, just you know, like a little bit sound check. Another, just throw a random emoji, like you know, like uh, run your emoji <laughs> randomizer and uh, give us uh, uh, some energy just to show that you know. <laughs> oh my god this is I amazing this guy, yeah. totally made my day 
totally made okay. my day. Yeah. In the meantime, Janiel say that with clean edges, he says armors. Uh, uh, well, when you usually make armors, uh, um, uh, I've made the uh, live in the, the Zebras Master series in which I talk about my work about creating armors, but uh, to make it very very fast. Uh, when I'm creating armors, I always want to rely on uh, uh, nice. Uh, topology of the lower subdivision level because I use and um, I create the clean lines uh, with the creases. So basically, uh, if I have just to show the logic, uh, I really want to have uh, some mesh with uh, let, let's use a cube because <laughs> uh, OK, uh, I really don't want to sculpt uh, the, the clean edges or at least I, I will sculpt uh, at the very end of the of the job but in order to create a nice and crisp detail i really want to rely on the crease so uh, tagging some edges and say okay i want this to be let me oops oh, i have to set the crease okay i want this when, when we subdivide this one i want this particular set of edges to stay kind of like sharp and so in this way if i raise up my dynamic subdivision count okay like this so i will uh, make three or four subdivision this is the only way in which you can really create super clean edges of course you really don't want them to look like computer generated so the logic is that usually you subdivide sometimes and then you get rid of the creases in order to create this sort of nice bevel look so i will go here under crease increase all and from now on when i subdivide more it will retain the nice edge but it will have a bit more smoothed of course the level of crease depends on the type of art surface that you're making if it's something like futuristic uh, let's think about something that has been created by machine with some laser cuts of course you really want to have super crisp and clean lines if it's something more in the medieval or fantasy style uh, you have to take into account that uh, ancient armors were created by hand so even if you have nice lines uh, usually you want to put some sort of a, of a, um uh Oh, I cannot remember, not only the English, but neither the Italian name. Okay, some defects, some some sort of... Uh, like imperfections. Uh, imperfect, exactly. Thanks a lot for helping me. Yeah, that was sure. the, the, the word. Connection, yeah. connection. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so some imperfection to, to really give the sense that this is a real armor and it comes from a particular age. So... Uh, Again, always the key is observing. In real world, usually you will never find this sort of super sharp edges. So you always have to find the right uh, value for your crease. So uh, yeah. with the right value, I mean, uh, you have to know when you want to increase before uh, creating I think there the, is, the uh, next. It's a really good point, yeah? and I think there is one really relevant question. What's the difference in process between realistic project and stylized? Oh, well, oh, it's a totally different kind of... Well, well, when it comes to realistic, uh, um, I mean, there are different styles. So they all always uh, rely on uh, observing uh, the, the, the particular style and trying to recreate it. Of course, uh, uh, when you are on the realistic side, you have to try to make your work uh, look as close as possible as the reference. So you want to focus on... Uh, of course, always nice primary and secondary forms, but also nice details, a nice rendition of the uh, uh, of the surface. So um, skin, in order to create believable skin, you, you want to make a good porosity. Uh, in order to create nice looking clothes, you want to, to create all the, all the stuff that are in the clothes. So seams, uh, stitches, uh, and uh, fabric patterns. Uh, the key is always to have uh, a nice silhouette <laughs> to make a good looking work because uh, Michelangelo's David has no pores, but is of course a, a super cool work. Uh, when you are on the stylized stuff, uh, it depends of course on the type of style, but you really want to synthesize the, the shapes and accentuate the gesture in order to, to create a simplified version of the, of the work. Uh, so probably in, in the stylized style um, part, at least for me, the most difficult part is uh, try not to overdo because uh, you always uh, want to keep an eye on keeping the things uh, as clean as possible. Um, 
Instead, when you are going into the realistic, of course, you want to have nice and clean forms, uh, but uh, uh, at a certain point will come uh, the moment in which you have to, to add those uh, imperfections that break the, the basic shapes uh, and give the sense of something that is really alive. I forgot um, that I muted myself. Sorry, I was just like talking alone. Okay, anyway. yeah, I, I, I felt a bit alone, but I had my friend. No, with no, me. no, no, no. It was just, okay. you can always just play the toy, you know, again. Okay. <laughs> but meanwhile, we actually have a question that I forgot to pull up from before. Uh, Vinha yeah. is asking if you have a tip for creating scales on the okay. skin. Yeah, like, so I have a very, very nice tip for the scales. Uh, let me say that if you really want to create nice scales, uh, I really suggest you to make them one by one. And it looks like it's super complex, uh, but it's really not. And I really want to spend uh, a, a bit of time on this topic because uh, this was kind of the, 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 the idea of the workshop. I really wanted to talk about this stuff. So um, my problem with scales uh, to of years ago was that uh, okay i can purchase uh, nice alphas of scales and stuff like that and i can use uh, let's say a standard brush i will set the mid value to 50 because uh, this type of uh, these alphas are really want uh, this type of of uh, mid value let me set reset for a second the brush because i probably have i've changed some settings and i want to start fresh so let, let's pick up just one of those Okay, like this. Let's say that we want to create this frog-like uh, uh, skin. Um, so my problem with this type of work is that uh, no matter how hard I try, if I set this mid value to 50. So basically I'm saying that I want to use the mid gray as zero value because uh, usually this is the, the approach that you, you use uh, when you use a scan data because uh, um, alphas that come from scans uh, want the mid gray as, a, as the medium value. So uh, what, what goes towards the black will uh, push uh, the mesh inside uh, and what goes around the white value will uh, pull out. So uh, let's say that I want to create this scale. So first problem is that usually when you are creating scales, uh, you, have, you have to set up your, your brush to have some sort of radial fade if uh, it has this sort of sharp borders uh, because uh, it will not create a cool looking go uh, Okay, so let me go here, modify and add some sort of radial fade. Oh, where is it? Oh, my interface is very small, so, okay. Yeah, here it is. I'm not sure that, okay, like, kind of like that. So it has this nice scale pattern, but when I create another stamp, and this is the thing that I hate, probably I suffer of a, of a bit of a OCD, but when I go closer, I can really see this overlapping effect taking place and mm, it's like, yeah, 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 I know what you I, mean. I, I, I really cannot survive with this. So uh, <laughs> the logic is that, uh, and it always uh, also happens if I create one single scale. Uh, I already talked sometimes about this technique. So uh, if somebody knows me, uh, probably they already heard it, but I, I feel that is uh, one of the coolest things that I came out while, you, while using ZBrush. So I always use this. So let's say that I also, now we create a very quick setup for a scale. It will not be anything so so cool, but uh, let's just create the shape of something that looks kind of like a scale. So I will blur this and I will, uh, uh, let's say, pull a bit out, uh, rotate this a bit, and then I will start sculpting something real quick. Let me see if I have, okay kind of like that uh, and I will let's create this sort of ridge for the scale some some snakes and some creatures have this sort of ridge and I really want to check to have this sort of shape like this because uh, some snakes have this scale that comes from from the one that is uh, before and uh, we create this sort of ridge effect okay and from here, I can extract my 3D alpha by going here with alpha uh, from from brush, no, from mesh, sorry. Or uh, as I said before, going, taking this one and selecting here under the brush menu, the from mesh. So it will add this here. So now I can create this, but when I go 
one over the other, oh my gosh, it creates this overlay. So um, no matter how hard you try, you will always find uh, very difficult to avoid this sort of overlapping effect, even if you have a very big alpha. Uh, and here you will have to rescut this. Uh, but there is a nice workaround. And I found out, uh, talking about the, the logic behind some of the brushes, because I knew from the very first version of ZBrush that there is a particular set of brushes that are of the type of the single layer brush that has a particular capability. So basically the single layer brush makes uh, uh, an effect that is very similar to other brushes. It will uh, add to the surface or uh, subtract based on, oh now, okay. Let me go back, okay. Based on the fact if I press Alt or not. So you can see that Basically, it works like any other brush. And so when you go over an existing stroke, uh, it will keep adding to the surface. But uh, I know because you, if you read the doc of the ZBrush, you know that if you have a morph tag stored, uh, you will not keep adding onto the surface. So basically, you can keep doing strokes. Uh, but those strokes, uh, when you go over on something in which there is uh, still, uh, there is uh, already some detail, will not keep adding detail. Uh, I really want to talk for a second about the logic because for me, uh, I repeat, I am some sort of scientist uh, and to me to understand things is important to understand the logic behind also because uh, I really strongly believe that, that the knowledge is power. So if you know, why a particular thing work in this way, you can really find the solution for your problem because uh, uh, this is the story with which I created this technique. So I will create the Polymesh 3D and subdivide just a couple of times. Um, so the logic is that in ZBrush, whenever you are adding something to the, uh, you are using a brush, you are telling ZBrush to add a particular amount of deformation. Because when you sculpt, you just you are just moving the points based on the particular algorithm of the brush. So let's say that here I have a brush and I'm saying to ZBrush that I really want, let me get rid of the alpha to have this sort of super sharp uh, thing. So let's say that in this way I'm adding, this is the zero level. So let's let's think in terms of uh, depth. So this is zero and this will be one. When I am adding one again, if I go on top of something that has already some detail, if here there, there was one, one plus one equals two. This is simple math. Okay, so the logic is that uh, it has almost all the brushes have this uh, additive uh, behavior. When you have a morph target, a morph target basically you are storing uh, the particular version of your tool uh, that uh, is in the screen in that moment. So let's say that I'm storing a morph target in which all the points uh, lay on the zero level. So in this setup, uh, this particular brush will sculpt not against the, the actual shape, but against the morph target. So no matter if I go over on top of something that has already one, if in the morph target that is this version, there was zero, one plus zero will be one. So it will, uh, the, the cool uh, uh, consequence of this is that if I have something that had adds more than one, it will replace the existing uh, detail. If I add something that is less than one, it will go underneath. Kind of look like going underneath. So the logic, uh, if I create a scale that uh, here is lower and here is higher, and it has also some sort of smoothing on the edges, so it will have this sort of curvature. When I scout on top of something, that has a morph target with this particular scale. Let me go over with this. Oh, I have to convert to a polymesh. Let's subdivide a couple of times. Let's store a morph target and also use the drag dot. That is the most it. descriptive emoji. I'm sure that everybody's experiencing this. Guys, I'm with you. I'm also just like watching. <laughs> You can see that there is no overlap. So basically creating a scaly pattern just takes uh, the effort of going here this and putting awesome. the scales. This is awesome, Daniele. And all my scaly monsters uh, at the moment are made in this way. And when you, when you really realize that uh, it really doesn't take that much to just focus uh, and go into that kind of Zen uh, 
mode in which you say, okay, I, I just have to spend some time and create scales on scales. I can change uh, my size. If you want, you could also use uh, maybe a different stroke. So let's say a dot, and I want to activate a lazy mouse uh, and change maybe the lazy step in order to find, uh, I have here the lazy step somewhere, probably is, uh, is uh, hidden by the, the stream yard uh, icon okay yeah i can change this here and i can find yeah. the right amount in which i have uh, the nice overlap so basically i could also create strips of scales i really prefer to make this this by hand but usually if i want to go fast i can do this but i can also let's say that i had this i can create a race so, uh, sorry, Daniele, there are a couple of questions about what you're yeah. explaining. I've got like uh, about 100 mind blown people in the chat. And uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, okay, uh, okay yeah, we... you're lost. So, the, the logic is that just take a plane and create your scale, or if you have a, an existing scale, just use an existing scale. Uh, associate this to a single layer brush. So, if you have this key cell creature, with this scale sculpted like this. Remember that you really want to have uh, um, super sharp corners. So if you subdivide this plane, uh, don't forget before sculpting to go here and perform a morph to grid because it will uh, put again the angles uh, uh, in the original position. If you have sculpted and you have forgotten this, so let's say that uh, I have subdivided another, another time and I have this, uh, a bit more rounded. You can really perform a morph to grid just on the edges by going under the masking, mask by feature. So with this, I'm masking the border. I will invert the mask and I will perform this morph by grid only on this edge. Okay. Amazing. So with this selected, you just go here and create your scale pressing this from mesh. So it will add, or, or you just can create a multi-alpha brush I have just one sub tool, so it will totally replace uh, all uh, the, the collection and will create this scale. And then you can save it. So let's save your scale stuff. So with this, uh, you go under your object. So let's go on Frankie and just store a morph target because without the morph target, it will not make any different from any other brush. So it will just create scales that overlap one on top of the other. But if you have a morph target stored, it will work in this way. The secret is trying to create the scale. Oh my God, what a difference. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, because, because, yeah. because it goes over. So you can really also create uh, small scales. So the logic is that try to create something that has some tapering. So if you make crocodile scales, you really want on the border to have this sort of tapering on all the edges, because when you add one close to the other, you can create, uh, and the, the, the turtle was created in this way. So uh, let's go here. So I have created this with this sort of tapering. For this, uh, for this I have just created uh, a UV, and I have created the repeated pattern with the alphas that I've shown. But after, but before, no, after creating a morph target. So. I could put these scales going on top of the pattern because for the for uh, the, the the principle that I've already explained, if this intensity is more of the existing one, it will go over. So right. imagine that you have uh, okay. Let's show real quick on a plane because uh, luckily for us uh, the ZBrush uh, basic plane has UVs, uh, so I can make polymesh 3D and I can apply a scaly alpha. I will first store a morph target, okay? And I will go here under the surface, noise, and I will just go and select some alphas with where it is, okay, this guy. And I will select the tileable one, okay? No, not this one, because it has a, a pattern in the middle. So let's take this one. Okay, and I will drive the noise by the UVs uh, without the, the um, mix by noise. And I will pull up the strength like that. Okay, and uh, let's lower the scale. Wow, we have a nice repeated pattern. Now I have to apply the noise. Remember that I have more targets. So uh, let, me, let me change also the intensity a bit like this. Okay, apply to mesh. 
perfect. So now we have this, but remember that the morph target is, uh, is flat. Sorry, the, there is the question, how am I supposed to remember this? Guys, you will get a replay, don't worry. You can okay. do it on the big screen on your TV in the living room and just watch it on the big screen. <laughs> okay. Project <Exactly>. this. <laughs> yeah, so now uh, let's say I also want this, no, okay. Let's say that we have this sort of pattern. I could make this stronger, but if I have something that goes over, you can see that it will keep going over. Of course, I would, I should somewhat think the scale in order to fuse well, but in this case, uh, oh, let me get rid of, uh, I have the smooth stronger active, so I will get rid, but of course, cleaning up this particular shape uh, is uh, totally different to get rid of overlaps. Uh, so you can see that again, always have scales that come out because uh, their intensity, their height is more than the one of the pattern. So if I really plan well uh, how to layer my details in which I say, okay, this will be somewhat lower. And on top of them, I will create something that come out. I can really perform any type of, of uh, scatting of scales and stuff like that. And remember that you can use not only 3D alphas, but I can select uh, a layer brush and associate any type of alpha because uh, this technique uh, works also in the, with this particular brush. You can see that it will go over and it will not. Uh, now I want to get rid of a bit of intensity because it's kind of extreme. But you can see that now it's creating some artifacts because, uh, let, let me go here. You can see that where it's higher, it will add and you will not see the underlying alpha. And there, are, of course, uh, in this case, you will uh, have some sort of artifact because the alpha is not created uh, thinking about this, this sort of technique. But usually, if you want, you can just go here and smooth the stuff. You can really can make stuff uh, coming out, come out uh, from other stuff without having this this bad overlap effect. Uh, let me show the difference between those two. So here, if I create this, you can see that uh, I really can uh, create this. Uh, and here, even if uh, it's not perfect, you can see that you cannot really appreciate any overlap. So from the far, uh, it looks like uh, it, it's less, uh, it has less artifacts. So you can see that I'm really overdriving the, the underneath detail. If I don't have the morph target, uh, you can see that there is a detail on top of other details. So here I have a clean scale, here it's a mess. And it's very noticeable, the difference, if you look from the far. So um, uh, I hope this, uh, this uh, make it clearer. Uh, the point, but of course you will have a replay and the logic is that use morph target and layer brushes. And I'm not going really into this, but uh, if you combine the morph layer with the layer system, you also have the capability to, to turn momentarily uh, uh, for a second off some details, sculpt other details and, and make some sort of black magic uh, with this type of techniques. Wow. This is crazy. Oh, yeah. I am crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're I'm crazy. Very... I mean, you got you got a couple of new nicknames, by the way. Um, yeah, okay. The old magician and uh, the black magician. <laughs> and uh... I'm not that old. Uh, come on. I also have this, uh, this nice guy. So I'm very young. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Wasim is saying that he's going to major in science. See you all in 10 yeah. years. <laughs> yeah, okay, perfect. Yeah, see you in 10 years. Uh, no, it takes, yeah, uh, so. Maybe it's... <laughs> Five yeah. to eight, eight years, yeah, to have a P P PhD. Amazing. So, um, so uh, Danko, can we quickly go through like three questions, but just like yeah, quickly sure. because we are actually running out of time. I'm very conscious yeah. of these guys. I'm not going to keep everybody here overnight uh, or like, you know, over day. So quick question from Adriana. Did you discover it by yourself? Yes. Yes, um, I, I I don't know. Probably some other people came out <laughs> to the same conclusion, but uh, you know, uh, it's just thinking because the logic uh, with which I came out is I thought about this layer brush system. I mean the the single layer type, and they said, okay, I have a, a way not to make overlaps. Uh, so the logic is that if I have something that goes from zero to the top. Uh, um, I can really make this sort of scales that go one on top of the other. So it just uh, when when I also tell to my students that knowledge is power because if you really can can think out of the box and and uh, try to to connect the points, uh, uh, knowing the the basic stuff and the logic behind this, uh, you, you can really not discover but invent your own technique techniques. Okay. 
This is amazing. I think this is so powerful that actually, you know, it's like, it's not even about just watching like one million tutorials. It's actually about working with your brain and just thinking oh, yeah, how that yeah. could work. Right. Yeah, but usually, usually I, I always tend to 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 work in this way. Um, uh, to me, the, the logic is that um, um, first of all, focus on the problem and then uh, try to find the solution, knowing the the tools that that I have uh, that, 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 that I can use. So uh, this is the way with which I created my full brush, uh, with with which I created this technique, uh, and with which I I really can take advantage of the polish by feature function mm -hmm. in order to create uh, clean armors because. Uh, I really can use it uh, to create uh, stuff that uh, really doesn't look like it's coming out of ZBrush and really quick. So that's yeah. it. Cool. Uh, and I'm going to ask actually, um, let's do what, one more question um, yeah. quickly. Um, so there was one before. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, fine. Let's do this one. Does the morph target help at the time of detailing pores? Oh, well, for pores, I will not use this technique because pores are very organic and you really want to play with the, with the sense of overlap. Just, just try, if you use alphas, not to make them overlap. If you use the Chris Costas way, you will make one by one. So you really don't have the, 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 the problem of, uh, of making them overlap. But um, in general, this is for the, the type of details that are organic, but have some sort of pattern and look. And you know that uh, re reptiles uh, with scales uh, have this nice pattern that, that have uh, nice flows and nice direction. For pores, uh, I probably, I, I will not waste time creating a setup uh, uh, to create this type of stuff. Just just create pores, uh, try try not to overlap uh, the same stamp of the alpha and uh, and play with the with the porosity and, and the wrinkles uh, to to make the 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 final and also the direction uh, the direction of the skin uh, to give uh, the, the 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 look of the right porosity okay okay amazing so yeah everybody's saying that uh, you probably see the chat but in case you know you don't there is like yeah. uh, um that there is a lot of experiments to do and uh, yeah so guys that was uh, how was the just overall um oh, how was the whole uh day today i mean the the workshop productive right just uh <laughs> kind of like that yeah <laughs> Oh my God! I hope people learned uh, something. I think that was uh, yeah. uh, that was super helpful. I mean, you know, um, like uh, finally somebody teaching how to use brains. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that very unusual. Could be the first thing to learn to use, yeah, how to use properly. Yeah, yeah. Wow, amazing. Um, Danko, can I post uh, your Frankenstein uh, uh, on the group? Sure. I know you're not sure. participating, but <laughs> just yeah, no, I, I, I'm, I'm not posting a lot just because here yeah, I have not a very good connection when I am in the hotel. I have no connection at all when I am in the hotel, so I am a bit out of the social for this uh, for this week. But yeah, sure, post it. I will, I will be super glad and honored if you if you post my Frankenstein. Not yes, this yes, version yes. with the scales because it's quite creepy well you know it's like extra cute because you know there is the yeah. whole internal club that yeah. of people that know what that means what this scale yeah. stand for yeah, yeah. <laughs> a bunch of people that will be watching this on the replay um awesome so uh yeah guys we're actually getting closer to the raffle as always uh but before before i do so um um, as, uh, um, by the way, you probably have no idea what is, what we are raffling because nobody has seen like, uh, the mentorship program, even <laughs> it's like the, <laughs> the, the best kept secret, you know? Um, yeah. so, uh, yeah, we're joining together. There is uh, there is a ZBrush fundamentals program. There is stylized character program. There is a ton of, uh, uh, of mentorship and uh, access to Danko and the the, the black wisdom. I'm sorry, Danko. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I'm packaging, and I'm packaging you and black... Marlon, everybody yeah, okay. together with uh, the mentorship. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can only wear this, you know, like uh, like. <laughs> oh, I don't have this with me. I I have the zebra. Yeah, I know. Shirt. You always but, wear it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Fine. Oh, it's okay. Uh, that's a ZBrush one. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, so yeah, the mentorship, and uh, you guys uh, will uh, see that. Uh, I'll, I promise, I promise, uh, on the email. But um, before I announce, we have a homework for tomorrow. 
So the homework. Actually, I'm, a, I'm, I'm even thinking of changing the homework a little bit so that everybody could practice scales, but no. So the homework for tomorrow, guys, again, is to post on the, um, like, a little progress. But what are we going to do? We're going to, like, you know, tweak things around a little bit. Instead of posting the whole whip, focus on details and, uh, like, focus on some close-up. Just like a whip of some close up. If you've got some porosity, if you've got some fur, if you've got some, just like any details and talk about, you know, your process or why you're posting these details. So, and like, let's just pay attention at how everybody else is making their details. Um, yeah. And uh, like, learn from each other a little bit and get inspired by techniques. So, sharing is has a lot of power knowledge is power quote quote yeah yeah Daniela, and sharing is caring yeah and sharing <laughs> is caring quote quote <laughs> i don't know who was the nice person who said that okay um Danko, you've got a lot of fans you've got to read this chat later before you go to bed okay oh, yeah. promise me I, I i spotted also some sort of um, um someone that loves me so i am very flattered yeah <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's definitely somebody except me. I was not writing in the chat, but I could, I could, you know, put the plus one. <laughs> okay. So uh, I'm going to get, uh, um, actually, I've, I already see the name here in my randomizer, uh, but, uh, uh, but I'm going to say now, okay, we need a drum roll because that's a pretty big prize. <laughs> we don't have a drum roll, but we have. Okay. Amazing. <laughs> Uh, I don't know actually if that's a real name or if that's a nickname. Amazing, yes. And it's Pete uh, Bibiloni. Do we have him in the crowd? I think we had Pete. Uh, like, uh, oh, he just commented actually recently. He's probably still. Oh wow. Uh, yeah, he's probably still here. Like, imagine well, if he left already. If he's one of the five people who left. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> then uh, so he lost, uh, then, he lost the prize. Yeah. 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 If he doesn't, if he doesn't show up, then you know we raffle this prize tomorrow again. But oh, okay. uh, but everybody, ah, I yeah, know he's yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here. Yeah. I, was, okay. I was I was just about to say that it's like uh, uh, yeah, the prize will go to somebody else. No, oh, no, the prize is assigned. Yeah. So congratulations. Yes, yes, yes. Congratulations. And uh, well, that's it. Uh, Pete, uh, get a, um, like get in touch with us, but we'll actually text you as well or text our group. And uh, yeah, well, uh, that's it. Danko, thanks so much. Uh, oh, congrats you Pete on, on uh, you're going to see Pete more probably uh, in the mentorship. Yeah. And uh, um, guys, for everybody else, we're going to send you the replay uh, just now. And uh, uh, we're going to see you tomorrow because tomorrow is the final workshop with Marlon. And Marlon is going to be doing, I think, rendering. Rendering and polypainting. Oh, wow. I should follow yeah. the workshop. What time is it? 